Come on, it ain't no such thing. Now, it ain't gonna hurt you none. I got things to do. The first thing you gotta do is sit down here and get your hair cut. My hair don't need cutting. If it gets any longer, I'll have to braid it. <laughs> Declare. You fight hair cutting like that steer fight brand. Well, the last time you cut my hair, you did brand me. How did I know somebody poured hot baby in my bowl? <laughs> Smarted considerable. Sure plastered your hair down nice, though. You no, know, I might go to selling that stuff. Gravy? <laughs> sure made your hair look mighty sprucey. Yes, sir. You were slicker than a peeled onion. Smell like one, too. Sir, I'd go to selling that stuff. I could put an ad in one of them catalogs. If you want the girls to stop and stare, put Granny's gravy on your hair. <laughs> All right, Granny, come on. Let's get on with it. Hey, Uncle Jed, you're getting your hair cut. Thanks for telling me, Jethro. Oh, that's all right. Darn it, Jethro. Well, what's going on? Is there going to be a wedding or something? I could be, the way that Sonny Drysdale is a spark and nearly made. Well, he's with her right now, up by the cement pond. I better get right out there and keep eye on him. Now, you sit still and leave those young'uns alone. Can't you remember how it was when you was a boy? Yeah. I better get right out there. <laughs> it's broad daylight. And besides, they swim. No, they ain't. They's just sitting on the bank, and he's a holding her hand. What an interesting hand you have. I see a man, a handsome man, a handsome Harvard man. Where? Right there on your heart line. Oh, that's just a one I got from picking up toast. <laughs> Ellie, you mustn't let horrid, slimy creatures touch you. Oh, heck, you ain't slimy, Sonny. Just a mite greasy from all that oil you smear on yourself. <laughs> what a precious paradox you are. What a charming contradiction. You look pure Park Avenue and you speak pure Tobacco Road. That good? Good. It's fascinating. You're a challenge to me, you child of nature. You are the raw clay from which I will mold a perfect woman, worthy of a perfect man. Me. <laughs> you know Shaw's Pygmalion? I don't even know Shaw, let alone his pig. <laughs> oh, you woodland sprat! <laughs> you forest little bird. <laughs> you are so refreshing after all those intellectual types of Basser and Wellesley. You make me feel superior. That good? Good? It's divine. <laughs> I am Caesar, and you are a fair-skinned captive, a barbarian slave. Shall I drag you through the streets of Rome behind my chariot? Oh, shall I throw you into the arena with my lions? No, Caesar has other plans for you, my little savage. You shall be my slave, yes, but only the invisible bonds of love shall make you my prisoner. <laughs> Come, I shall strum upon my lion and recite odes to your beauty. What say you to that, fair maiden? How speak you now to mighty Caesar? I declare, Sonny, you're more fun than a bucket of tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> I declare you're wigged and worse than a worm in a bait bucket. You want your daughter to be an old maid? Of course not. Next year, she'll be too old to get a husband. She's almost 18. <laughs> Sure is. She done waited too long, Uncle Jed. Why, no boy wants to marry up with a middle-aged woman. Mimi <laughs> mean, can get herself a husband anytime she wants to. Why, she's the prettiest oh, and... Oh, now, don't get your old feathers riled up, you old rooster, you. Ellie May will be all right if you just leave her alone. Well, I ain't sure Sonny Drysdale's good enough for her. He's considerable older than she is. Well, don't worry about that, Uncle Jed. His family lives a heap longer than most folks. Yeah? Yeah. Sonny told me that there's been a member of his family of living in Boston since 1632. Well, that rascal's over 300 years old. He was a green in you. Yeah, you sure swallowed a whopper. No, ma'am. Sonny's honest. 
Well, he's so honest, he has to have somebody do his lying for him. Do his lying for him? Yes, sir. Well, I heard him call through the heads to Ellie. He says, I'm coming over to serenade you, and I'm going to bring my liar. <laughs> Come, fair maiden, and I shall sing of your golden tresses, and your azure eyes, and your skin of alabaster, and your other charms that set me aflame. You mean you're really burning? <laughs> yes, dear one. And only you can put out the fire. Okay. <laughs> Feel better now? All right, Jezra. You're next. Oh, hi, Ellie May. Where's Sonny? Well, he went home to his mama. You didn't throw him down and hurt him again, did you? That's so right, Pa. He caught fire, so I wetted him down in the pond. Sound like you done the right thing? How'd he catch fire? He said it was my charms that set him to burning. What charms would you told him? Well, just my sack of crawdad bones and my buckeye. <laughs> you never heard of crawdad bones and a buckeye starting to blaze? What happened to your rabbit's foot? <gasps> I didn't have it. There you are. You can't expect trouble when you ain't toting a rabbit's foot. You know what my teacher over at Pot School said about toting a rabbit's foot? What? She said it's a superstitious invocation contradicted by scientific knowledge. It's always nice to know you ain't been doing something foolish. Don't you worry, Nun Ellie. You go jump into a pretty dress, and I'll walk you up a love charm that I guarantee will bring Sonny Drysdale back. Yes, I am, Mother. I'm going back. Sonny, darling, you're delirious. Uh, uh, oh. Here, bring some of this penicillin. I'll send for an ambulance. Mother, I am perfectly all right. Of course you are, precious. A nice rest in an oxygen tent is all you need. I don't need an oxygen tent or an ambulance. All right. All right. Just relax. And Mumsy will call the police. Police? But of course. I mean to have that violent, dangerous girl arrested for attempted drowning. Mother, <laughs> you will not call the police. I'm going back there right now to see Ellie May. Ah, darling, that's very brave of you, but you're in no condition to make a citizen's arrest. Mother, I'm not going to arrest her. I want to help her, to work with her, to, to tutor her. What? She's like a wild, wonderful jungle cat, and, and I'm going to tame her. Honey, you are delirious. I'll call the doctor. Mother? Oh. Mind is made up. That girl needs me. For the first time in my life, somebody really needs me. I need you. The whole world needs you. Ellie Mae Clampett needs me, and I need her. I'll be her Pygmalion, and she'll be my Galatea. <laughs> ah! oh. Sonny, you're not becoming emotionally involved with that creature. She's not a creature, Mother. She's a girl. A wild, wonderful... Beautiful, ravishing girl. Yes, I am becoming emotionally involved. <laughs> I forbid it. She's not socially acceptable for my baby. Mother, I'm not your baby anymore. I'm a man in search of a woman. <laughs> there goes that music again. <laughs> Did you ever find out where that's coming from? No, sir, I didn't. Every time I went to look for it, somebody always come to the door. <laughs> this time I'm going to find it for sure. You see? <laughs> oh, bonjour, Jeffro. Oh, howdy, Miss Hathaway. No, oh, no, 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 no. When I say bonjour, Jeffro, you say Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. Now say it. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. <laughs> no, that's very good. Except for the moi. Uh, must be soft. Moi. Mm, moi. No, 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 no. W w watch, my, watch my lips closely. Moi. Try that. Moi. 
Try it again. Wah! <laughs> that, that's closer. Try again. Wah! Mm, Once more. Wah! Mm, Close in on her, Jethro. <laughs> Mr. Clavett, I, I was attempting to teach Jethro to articulate the Gallic diphthong. No matter what fancy name you call it, he ain't very good at it. <laughs> You'll learn. But now to the purpose of my visit. Is Sonny Drysdale here? No, but uh, he will be. Granny's out in the kitchen whomping up a love charm for Ellie to give to him. She said it'll bring him on the run. Mr. Clavett, I am reluctant to disillusion you about so-called love charms, but they are mere superstitious invocations and have been proved to be completely ineffective. Granny sets great store by him. <laughs> Here you are, Ellie. One guaranteed love charm. Guard it with your life. What's in it, Granny? Oh, I doesn't tell you. Leastways, not just yet. But I'll give you the secret before I go on to my reward like my Granny done to me. And I'll guard it too, Granny. Granny? Granny, Mr. Clapper tells me that you've conjured up some sort of love charm for Ellie Mae. Right, sure it is. Made out of all secret stuff. That is ludicrous, irrational, sophomoric, and <laughs> pure hokum. <laughs> You didn't even guess one ingredient. <laughs> no, Granny. Ah, don't you come spying. I'm telling you for the good of the country. If the secret of this love charm ever got out, I shiver to think what might happen. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. <laughs> Hear me now, mongrel. Neither sleep, nor snow, nor vicious beast shall keep me from the side of my beloved. Here I come. Ready or not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, you still think it won't work, huh? That is correct. <laughs> All right, Ellie. Open up the pasture, mate. Now, when I drop this starting powder in it, quick close it, press it to your heart, and say, darling, darling, my true love, come a swooping like a dove. <laughs> darling, darling, my true love, Come and swoop it. I could die. This is Ellie. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> I have flown to your side in spite of all danger. What fate, what power have I to thank for giving wings to my feet? That little old charm maker, me. <laughs> and now we shall begin the transition from Tobacco Road to Park Avenue. Now, you watch me closely, and I'll show you how to develop perfect posture and grace of movement. Ah, Kipling. Well, do you like Kipling? I don't know. I ain't never Kipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a challenge, you ravishing rustic, you child of nature. Now, here, you try it. There we are. Now walk. Oh. <laughs> You'll have to try that again. Now, sit down. Now watch me. We walk as though upon a cloud, and we glide with lissom grace. And as we walk, we always keep a smile upon our face. What's he doing? That there is something called kippling. He's trying to learn to Ellie. <laughs> this is how you sit in a chair, smoothly and gracefully. <laughs> There ain't no chair where he's a sitting. I know. What do you reckon's wrong with that rascal? Appears to me he's about two bricks shy of a load. <laughs> Turn old Duke loose so he can go in there and protect Ellie. <laughs> now we'll practice diction and intonation at the same time. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? What's he talking about? He thinks old Duke is a cow. <laughs> you best fetch Granny. Here's to be she's threw too strong a charm on that boy. <laughs> there you are. One guy. 
guaranteed charmer. Now, you hold the bag while I sift in the starter. I know this is all a lot of absolutely ridiculous nonsense. Please hurry. <laughs> <laughs> darling, darling, my true love, come a-swooping like a dove. I better open this door before he busts it in. <laughs> Miss Jane! Here he is! Granny's love charm is too strong. Don't fight it! It's bigger than both of us. <laughs> Circled on me. Granny, come quick. The love charm you throwed on Sunday Drysdale was too strong for him. <laughs> Thank you, Granny! <laughs> How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now? Brown cow. How now, brown cow? <laughs> How's it going, Uncle Jed? Bad. Now he's got Ellie believing old Duke is a cow. <laughs> Rick and Charm, Granny? I reckon so. I'll sprinkle him with some let go powder. Why, you're at it. Sprinkle some on Miss Jane. She's shutting off the blood to Marv. How oh, now, brown cow? Secret powder, white as snow, make the charm of love let go. The spell is broken. Now, please, everybody listen to me. I must have complete quiet and concentration if I am to transform this bucolic beauty into a sophisticated debutante. Now, I have studied drama at Yale, Harvard, Princeton, and Dartmouth, and I am probably the only living man who can accomplish this difficult cultural metamorphosis in the brief time available. <laughs> now, everybody, please go! <laughs> while I transfuse into this simple, untutored mind the charm, the polish, the splendor that is Sonny Drysdale. <laughs> Hi, Granny. Is Ellie and Sonny still in that room alone? He was the last time I was listening, a couple hours ago. He was talking about the rain in Spain, a land in the plain. Well, I guess he can't be up to no nonsense if they're talking about the weather. <laughs> no, he's, I can't wait to see Ellie all polished up and talking like Sonny and Miss Jean. While you're waiting, I got something for you. What is it? A love charm. <laughs> what in Sam Hill I want with that? It ain't what you're wanting, it's what you're getting, a woman. And it's high time you got one being a widower. Besides, the moon is right. That's why this stuff is working so high-fired powerful. So here. Well, I ain't interested in none of these la di da Beverly Hills women, so here. Well, they're interested in you, so here. Who said? Jethro said. Jethro don't know nothing, so here. I reckon Jethro ought to know what's going on in his own school. Besides, I saw her making sheep's eyes at you, so here. You caught who making sheep's eyes at me? Mrs. Millicent Schuyler Potts, that's who. Oh, now, you did. <laughs> I educate a woman like that. Jethro says she asks for you every day. Hmm. Oh, what she want with an old mountain goat like me? If I was to put a little starting powder in there, and you was to say the magic words, no woman could resist you. Oh, I don't hold with stuff like this. You're scared, ain't you? Oh, I ain't a scared. Then go ahead. Die double dog dare you. Well. Open the pouch of mite. Well, this is just a lot of doggone nonsense. Close it tight, clamp it to your heart, and say the words. <laughs> darling, darling, my true love come a-swooping like a dove. Where is he? Where's my dog? It's Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> where is he? Oh, where is he? Oh. I tried to stay away, but I could not. He's mine, and no other woman shall have him. Right, then. You're a married woman. Think of your husband. Come on. I don't care about my husband. I want my darling, and no one is going to keep me from him. Uh, I sure hate to have to do this, but... Sonny, <coughs> <coughs> where are you, Sonny? 
He's inside with Ellie Mead. Now, if you just calm yourself down, I'll go and get him. He's coming, Miss Charles. Howdy, Ma. Was you a hollering for me? <laughs> here pretty soon. How'd you know? Sonny's giving Ellie a ring this morning. I, uh, I couldn't get to sleep last night, and I heard them talking down by the door. All the way from your bedroom? Well, my window was open. Well, it's still a powerful long ways to hear. Now I could climb out into a tree and shinny down a ways. <laughs> you heard Sonny asking Ellie to get engaged? Plain as day. Sonny said, Ellie, you're going to be home in the morning? And Ellie said, yes. And Sonny said, I'll give you a ring at 10 o'clock. Yeah, no, he's... Was pretty near straight up for 10 right now. Hello? Oh, good morning, son. I mean, uh, Sonny? <laughs> yeah, Ellie's here. Uh, why don't you come on over? Oh, you want to talk to her on the telephone? Well, just a minute. Can't give a girl no ring on the telephone. <laughs> telephone, Ellie! Okay, Pop. I'll get it up here. Oh, Granny, you hadn't ought to be listening. Well, it's a lot easier than shinning down a tree in the dark. I tore my knife down. <laughs> I sent a bunch of these back home to Cousin Pearl. What fur? Yeah, you know how she was always bragging about her daughter, Jethreen, going to beat Ellie Mae to the altar? Yeah. <laughs> I sure would like to see the look on Pearl's face when she sees this. <laughs> Jeff Green, look at this. And I always bragged that you could beat Ellie Mae to the altar. I can, Ma. I can outrun Ellie Mae. My legs is long. <laughs> look, we gotta get busy. Now, what time's that Jasper fella coming to court you? Six o'clock. He's taking me out in his car. Oh, no, he ain't. He's carting you right here in my parlor, where I can see to it that he gets to the point. Well, that's where he's taking me, Ma. Perkins Point. There's the barn dance thing. <laughs> I'm talking about the point of proposing to you. Don't you want to get yourself a husband? Yes, sir. Jethreen, why couldn't you have been born with some of my brains instead of just my beauty? <laughs> of course, I got to admit that you ain't quite as pretty as Ellie Mae. I ain't even as pretty as her fella. <laughs> you are so... <laughs> you got something to show us, Ellie Mae? Yeah, hold out your hand. Let us take a look. Face clean, Pa. I washed him with soap. <laughs> oh, ring? No, Granny. I washed him all the way up to here. <laughs> Sonny Drysdale didn't give you no engagement ring? Just no, Pa. Why do you want to do that? He's going to take me driving. That's bad. Out driving in broad daylight ain't no way to get engaged. What are you talking about? I propose to your daughter out driving. In a horse and buggy, that's a heap different. Besides, that old Mary of yours knew right where she was going. That way you could turn your attention on Rose Ellen. That's the truth. But out driving in an automobile in city traffic, with all them cars trying to hit you, by the time you turn your head to say, will you, somebody has. <laughs> <laughs> No two ways about it. That child is going to need help to trap that Sonny Drysdale. Ellie May don't need a trap, no man to get him. Every man that ever got get was get that way. <laughs> Not me. We just happen to stop under a shady elm tree, and I propose to your daughter on the spur of the moment. 
That spur of the moment of yours took us six months scheming and planning. Why, we even trained that old mayor of yours to stop under that shady old elm tree. <laughs> well, any trapping will have to be up to you, Granny. I wouldn't know what to do except I held a shotgun on Sonny. Well, I'll study on it. Them city fellas might be different. <laughs> Jed, you reckon we'll ever find out where that music comes from? Uh, I reckon, if we keep a looking. <laughs> You're wasting your time of looking for that there music. I've looked for it a dozen times, and before you can find it, somebody will come a-rapping at the door. <laughs> See? Told you. <laughs> oh, hi, Sonny. Greetings, all. Sally May ready? She sure is. She's been ready since she's been 14. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, well, Sally May, uh, Sonny's here. What we want to know is, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure hope you young folks have a dandy drive. Oh, we shall. I plan to take Ellie on a socially significant drive through Brentwood and Bel Air to show her some of our depressed areas. <laughs> Ellie May, you look positively divine. So do you, Sonny. I know. <laughs> Don't you bite me. Ellie May, a kiss on the hand is a very proper greeting. Oh. Come on, everybody, kiss Sonny tight. Please, come on, on our way. Well, have a nice drive, y'all. Yep, and if you pass under a shady elm tree, it won't hurt none to stop for a spell. <laughs> Where you going? To follow him. <laughs> now hold on, you two. You can't follow Sonny. He'll see you. They won't know who we are. We'll be wearing dark glasses. <laughs> He'll think we're a couple of Beverly Hills movie stars out for a drive. <laughs> Come on off that truck. Come on. <laughs> But I'm afraid it ain't gonna get hard. Well, if it don't, you and Jasper can eat it with spoons and I'll tell him I made it. You done dressing? Yeah, Ma. Well, come on in here and let me see how you look. <laughs> Turn around, let me see your sash. You yeah, do get the boat straight. Now, I want you to bring out them pillowcases you've been embroidering for your hope test. The ones with his and hers worked in French knots. Never hurt none to let a bow see your handy with a needle. But I ain't. I always stick myself. Well, if you do, don't bleed on the pillowcase where you'll see it. <laughs> now, when you show him the star optic in pictures, these is the ones I've picked out for you. They'll put him in the right mood. Niagara Falls by moonlight. Wedding under the bower. The stolen kiss. <laughs> Lily and Russell in tight. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> what are you going to play on the pump organ for him to show off your music talent? How about Russell O'Spring? That's a dandy, full of runs and trills. And then there's the part where you cross your hands. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Jeffrey. That's one place you got it over your cousin Ellie May play in the pump organ. <laughs> Them hands can stretch pert near two octaves. <laughs> and them feet is made for pumping. <laughs> well, it's almost time for Jasper to get here. How do you feel, darling? I feel like I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> My baby shoes. Aren't they cunning? <laughs> Stiff, I don't see how you ever walked in. Mother had them bronzed. Didn't help much. They're still stiff. <laughs> What's this sign? Oh, that's my teddy bear. His name is Pooh. Would you like to kiss him? Well, not especially. I guess you'd rather kiss me. I'll kiss the bear. Oh, 
I guess you're not in a very romantic mood. A little music will remedy that. You like to dance? I ain't never try. Well, you're in for a divine experience. I'll teach you. Now watch. Frightened? No, that ought to be. Yes, you're in great danger. How come? You're in a man's room alone. No, I ain't. You're here. <laughs> you are not playing the game. <laughs> Still feeling sick to your stomach, darling? Yeah, Ma. Well, I went out to sell her and I drawed off some homemade elderberry wine. Ain't nothing in the world better for settling a queasy stomach. Of course, according to the rules, you shouldn't touch spirits till your wedding day, but I guess in case of an emergency, a little swallow won't hurt. I know it's a mite bitter taste in, but try and force a little down. It make you feel better. Now, just a little more, Jeffrey. Do it for your ma. Jasper will be here any minute now. <laughs> Even better? A little. <laughs> I've got it figured how we get you to play the pump organ for him. I know just what he'll say when he walks in, because everybody does. He'll say, Why, I declare, that's a mighty fancy pump organ you got there. And I'll say, why, thank you. I'm mighty partial to pump organ music. And then you say, why, I'll play something. And then you sit down and you play like you never played before. You understand? Yes, sir. There he is. You ain't gonna throw up, Harry. I'll try not. <laughs> Evening, Miss Bodine. Why, Jasper DePew, what a surprise. Green, honey, look who's here. Evening, Jethreen. <laughs> Jethreen's had a little nervous upset. I reckon it's the strain of all those bows that come a carton. I swear I got a sweet mind of this parlor every day. Hey, that's a mighty fancy pump organ you got there, ma'am. <laughs> Why, thank you. I'm mighty partial to pump organ music. <laughs> In fact, I'd just love to hear some pump organ music right now. I'll play you some, ma'am. <laughs> Sonny and Ellie ain't home yet. Where could they be? What are they doing? Are they engaged? Why don't we hear something? Oh, that poor, sweet, innocent Ellie May out there in the dark with a man. Jed, maybe something happened. Now, maybe something. Granny, calm down. Ellie can take care of herself. I reckon you ain't nervous, huh? Good nerd is sitting here whittling. Well, what you're whittling on used to be the arm of that chair. Well, 
Reckon I am a mite nervous at that. Now, Jeff, when they do get home, you and me have got to see the Sonny don't get away without being proper engaged. Granny, maybe we's rushing things. Maybe Sonny ain't ready to get married. Jed, no man is ready to get married. You gotta get him ready. Like you get a steer ready for slaughter. Can't you find something else to compare it to? <laughs> well, here we are. I reckon it's time to say good night. I sure do thank you for the nice ride, Sonny. My pleasure, Ellie Mae. I'll give you a ring in the morning. Promises, promises. <laughs> Would you like to take another drive tomorrow? I sure would. Where shall we go? To the preacher. Any <laughs> place you say, Sonny. Well, see you tomorrow, then. Oh, here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Howdy, Granny. Well, then, sakes, look who's here. <laughs> Ed, come say hello to Sonny. Don't bother, Mr. Clampett. I'm leaving. I'll show you a shortcut. Howdy, Sonny. Good evening, Mr. Clampett. Jed, now is your time to have that talk with Sonny. What talk? About Ellie May. I got nothing to talk to Sonny about Ellie. Oh, that's right. I'm the one that's going to talk to Sonny. You talk to Ellie May. <laughs> Do you have something to tell me, Pa? Well, I hadn't planned on it, but uh, maybe now's a good time. Sit down. Ellie? Yeah, Pa? Women folks, like uh, your granny, Aunt Pearl, seem to set great store by matchmaking. They just can't rest easy till everybody's paired up, and the sooner the better. Now, your granny wants you to marry up with Sonny Drysdale. Do you want me to marry up with him, Paul? Tell me, there's only one thing in the world I want for you, and that's to be happy. Well, do you reckon I'd be happy married up to Sonny? Only if you love him. Well, how do you know if you love somebody? Well, I can't exactly explain how you know, but when it happens, you know. You don't need nobody to shove you. You just can't wait to get married. How do you feel that way about Sonny? Well, I ain't sure. Do you reckon he feels that way about me? Now, tell me, how do you feel about getting married and settling down and raising a family? I find the notion completely repugnant. <laughs> that's good. That, that's good. One man who simply cannot be monogamous. Fine and dandy. <laughs> tell me, how do you feel about Ellie? I find her beautiful, charming, refreshingly different, but somewhat lacking in the social graces. What's that mean? Well, for example, she can't dance. Ellie Mae Clampett? Why, she's got dancing in her soul. I'm a grandma, and I want you to know I was the best doggone dancer that ever came out of the Tennessee Hills. And her paw can outstomp a riled up mule. Come on, city boy. Us Clampets is gonna set your shoes to smoking. <laughs> By the way, you young people can dance if you like. Not me. I'll go for some of that fight. <laughs> Come on, honey, let's dance. I'll, I'll t t turn on the Victrola for you. Come on, sweetie, let's dance. <laughs> You'd never know she was moving. <laughs>
cousin for? We're celebrating your cousin Ellie Mae getting married. Is Ellie getting married? She sure is. Really? Who is she marrying? You. Me? That's right. <laughs> Besmirched, sweet Ella May's been courted, but the darling ain't been churched. <laughs> it was young Sonny Drysdale that courted her and fled, and now the Drysdale family will feel hot clamped lead. Cause, stranger, you don't trifle with a hillman's daughter fair. Or you will face his rifle, and he'll deeply part your hair. <laughs> now here's the handsome rascal that started this year feud. A Harvard, Yale, and Princeton man, a shifty city dude. His game was love and run away, cause that's the way he lives. But they don't allow such doings with their female relatives. <laughs> Now they're on their way next door, a loaded up for bear. And if my name was Drysdale, I'd be getting out of there. Cause mountain justice does demand that when a wrong's been done, the kin of him that done it must also face a gun. <laughs> now Sonny noticed Ellie Mae beside the swimming pool. And when he seen her figure, he lost his yin for school. He wrapped himself up in a towel and played upon his lyre. And while he twanged, the songs he sang did set her heart afire. <laughs> he drove his fancy auto up and took her out to spark. And all alone, unchaperoned, he kept her after dark. He took her in the parlor and he taught her to be grand. He showed her how to walk and talk and tried to kiss her hand. <laughs> he took her to his private room to see his loving cup. And a man that wins a prize for that ain't on the up and up. He wooed her with a tango and a rose betwixt his teeth. A smiling on the outside, but a leering underneath. <laughs> even had a wedding dance and he joined in the fling he brought along his dancing shoes but didn't bring no ring the clampets was a planning for a wedding in the field but they was duped he flew the coop and went running back to yale <laughs> and now the clampet clan is here to even up the score I wouldn't want to be the man who opens up that door. He'll have to face their fury on revenge they are intent. And if his name is Drysdale, his life ain't worth a cent. It's that butler fella. Where will you clamp its lure? There are no possums to hunt in Beverly Hills. <laughs> the possums we's after, it's Drysdale. Well, they're not at home. Mrs. Drysdale returned to Boston with Sonny, and Mr. Drysdale's at the bank. Let's shoot him. There ain't gonna be no shooting unless it's talk first. When will Mr. Drysdale be home? Uh, not until late this evening. That's talk enough. Let's go to shoot. Oh, Granny, you can't shoot on our man. That's right. I lost my head. Here! 
Now, when death row counts three, we go at it. One, two. Now, hold on. Mr. Butler here ain't done us no wrong. He's one of their clan. I said there ain't gonna be no shooting. Let's just talk first. I'll speak to Mr. Drysdale. Thank you kindly, Mr. Butler. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Butler. Why didn't you ask him to dance with you? I was ashamed of you in front of these young ones. Is that any way to learn them feuding? <laughs> oh, it takes my family to know how to feud. I drove the Botkins clean out of Napoleon, Tennessee, chased them off, burnt their shack, and shovel their footsteps off the path. Hot diggity dog! That's what I call feuding. I'm sure proud to come from a family like yours, Granny. That was the Moses family. Too bad our blood is being thinned out, cooled off, and watered down with the clampet blood. Now, Granny, you just simmer down to a boil. I'll see the right thing is done by my daughter. Jethro, you drive me down to the bank. Drysdale and me will have a man-to-man -man talk. <laughs> Ain't you about a man and a half short? <laughs> You wait here, I'll go and see Mr. Drysdale. You flush him out, Uncle Jed. I'll get him on the run. <laughs> now, who told you to bring that? Granny. She says there's got to be one fighting man in the family. <laughs> you just drive around a while and cool off. Pick me up here in about a half hour. Okay, Uncle Jed. Something, Ellie? Feuding's fun. <laughs> Jethro, put her down. They got one of our men folks. We're gonna take one of their men folks. How about we take her along as kind of an extra? <laughs> no, not unless they captured one of our women folks. Ellie May, you go in there and surrender. Well, I ain't gonna do it. Jethro, put her down. How about I told her as far as home and then let her escape? A little at a time. <laughs> Wait. What's the meaning of this? He's the one we want. You told him, Ellie. My arms is full. Put her down before I take you to the woodshed. You look awful busy, Granny. Uh, maybe I should go to the woodshed and wait for you. Well, I think I'd better call the police. Stop! Your tracks while you're able to make them. Now you turn around. Walk towards our house. I refuse to take one step. Now. You want to walk or you want to limp? <laughs> you better run the telephone, please. Never mind her, Jethro. Shoot the telephone wire. There's what's having your mind on women can do to you. It took you two shots to get that wire. Oh, Granny, I got two wires. <laughs> I keep on telling you and on telling you, I got $25 million in Mr. Drysdale's bank. No, you didn't. They caught you before you got a penny. <laughs> Your patient, Doctor. Obvious delusions of grandeur. 
Now, tell me, about this bank attempt, did you have any accomplices? Any what? Confederates. Oh, yeah, Granny. She's a Confederate. She's a Tennessee Moses. <laughs> Tennessee Moses? That's right. Tell me, did she lead her people out of Tennessee? Sure did, after they whooped the Botkin. <laughs> Don't you mean the Egyptians? Well, they probably whooped the Egyptians, too, if they got in their way. Granny's folks were fighting food. <laughs> they certainly were. They defeated the best fighters Pharaoh had. I don't know about that, but they whooped the best fighters Napoleon had. Napoleon. Doctor, may I? You may not. I'm the one who uncovered this hallucination. <laughs> Tell me about Napoleon. Yes. You say Granny's folks won that fight? They sure did. Over Napoleon? Oh, yeah. They tromped all over Napoleon. Fabulous. But how were they able to do it? Did they fight with superior weapons? Oh, they fought with Bodkin. <laughs> I see. And uh, Napoleon didn't have any Bodkin? Not after Granny's folks got through with him, Napoleon didn't have a Bodkin left. <laughs> I remember the last day of the feud, they got Leif and Luke and Odds. Odds? Odds Bodkin. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Just for a minute. Perfectly safe to look out through the bars. After all, it's... Mr. Kravitz! What the war? Mr. Dean, Mr. Drysdale, he sure didn't treat me very good over to your bank. My first visit, too. Let this man out of here. He's got $25 million in my bank. Open this door! Open it! Open it! Oh. Lie down, mister. <laughs> You see, all my employees are trained to be on the lookout for bank robbers. So naturally, when they saw you walk in with your rifle, their first instinct will, will appear to them that was just... Well, it was, you're not mad, are you, Mr. Clavett? Well, no, we're not about the bank, but uh, we's all right upset at Sonny for running off and jilting Ellie Mae. Sonny? Jilting Ellie Mae? Well, that's what we'd call it. He sparked her for two weeks running. Took her driving, dancing, held her hand, kept her out past dark. Back where we come from, that's just the same as saying, will you? Provided the girl is 12 or better. Mr. Clavin, you have my word of honor. I had no idea that Ellie Mae or any of you took Sonny seriously. Now, the moment we get to your house, I'm going to telephone Sonny in Boston. Get him on the first plane, and he'll be here tonight to propose marriage to Ellie Mae. Well, now, that sure is going to smooth Granny's ruffled feathers. She's been madder than a barefoot centipede standing on a hot rock. She'll be happy when we get there. Yes, bless her sweet little heart. Granny, I see him. They coming. How many is they? Miss Hathaway and Mr. Drysdale. They's holding Paul prisoner. Come on now. We'll stop them at the gate or blast them at the barricades. <laughs> Careful! They's a coming. Get ready to do battle. <laughs>
Here's the Drysdale mansion where he's fleeing like a rat since Granny put a bullet through his $20 hat. But even here, he can't escape the scourge of Tennessee cause she's got Ellie spying from the tip top of a tree. Granny, they took Paul to the Drysdale's house. Come on down, we'll go get him. <laughs> Well, I reckon we'll have to call her on the telephone. When Granny's feuding, she's sometimes hard to reason with. Reckon seeing you with that rifle kind of set her off. But that woman shot at me. Oh, Mr. Drydale, she shot at your hat. If that little old woman ever goes to throwing lead at you, you be casting a polka dot shatter. Please, <laughs> Ravenswood, why don't you answer the door? Oh, thank goodness it's you. The Clampets came and captured Ravenswood. Captured him? Yes. And Jethro picked me up in his arms. He held me and held me and wouldn't put me down. Why? He said it was beauty. <laughs> well, now, don't you worry, Marie. We're going to get this whole thing all straight now. Come on, Jethro. We're going back to the Drysdale's house. Hot diggity dog. That's the part of feuding I like. <laughs> we're taking you with us, Mr. Butler. And if they've harmed one hair on Jed, that one hair you got will pay the price. Oh, won't you please listen to me? Mr. Drysdale's not feuding with you. He's a peaceful man. He's never shot anything but skeets. Skeets? How many did he get? We did very well. 98 out of 100. That's better than we did with the Bobkins. <laughs> ready, Granny? Come on, young ones. We got our feuding cut out for us. That Drysdale's our shooting fool. Now, Ellie Mae, you carry the flag high and proud. If they shoot you, don't you let it touch the ground. Throw it to Jethro as you're falling. I'll do it, Granny. What'd you do that for? If any long-range shoot, they'll think he's one of us and drop him first. <laughs> Forward, march! <laughs> hmm. No wonder the phone wouldn't work. Marie said Jethro shot down the wires. Well, we can go next door and use a Miller's phone. Been cutting a rifle bullet. Kind of ragged, though. Jethro must have been upset. That's bad shooting, to cut those little wires with a rifle? Why, when that boy puts his mind to it, he can pick a gnat off a plate of grits at 500 feet in a heavy fog. <laughs> I'm the only one who can outshoot him. Except for Granny and Ellie May. <laughs> well, what skeet shooters you'd make? What skeet? Oh, they're clay pigeons. That's what I shoot. Clay pigeons? Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. Your wife must be a first-rate cook. <laughs> now here comes Granny's little band to free their leader, Jed. And anyone that blocks their path might just as well be dead. For though their numbers may be small, the flag that leads their way is the flag that led Pickett's charge at Gettysburg, PA. <laughs> idea. We use Mr. Butler here as a decoy, and we'll surprise him. What you mean, Granny? You knock on the door, and you yell to him inside that it's you. Then we'll rush in and we'll get Jim. And maybe somebody else, too, huh, Granny? <laughs> you keep your mind on your feuding. Come on. It's me, Ravenswood. Open up. Marie? You may open it. <laughs> Nothing to be afraid of. It's just Ravenswood. Step aside, decoy. Ellie, you guard him. Jethro. When they open the door, we'll rush him. Off a rail fence. <laughs> Ellie, 
Hey, what in the world are you doing? I'm guarding a decoy, folks. Ravensworth, you Boston Yankee, bear your head in the presence of our flag. <laughs> See our flag? My family came from Tennessee. I did too. Jed, I always did like this man. Why, sure, Granny, and he's going to make Sonny do the right thing by Ellie Mae. What does that mean, Paul? Going to make Sonny come back here and marry you. I don't want to marry Sonny. See, Granny, the whole doggone feud was for nothing. Not altogether, Jed. Why, we might never have known that Mr. Drysdale here was a fine gentleman from Tennessee. Yeah. Tell me, ever hear of the Moses family? Hear of them? Why, my mother's family feuded with them for years. <laughs> you mean your mother was a bodkin? <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, don't ask me why. I just commenced to running. <laughs> you heard him. Run, you yellow bodkin. I'm a Moses. <laughs> City feller, he sure can run. Like a scared rabbit. Well, let's go home. Yeah. Put her down. Oh, listen, Granny. I heard you and Uncle Jed talking about what to get me for Christmas. This here will save you shopping. You can't take her home for Christmas. Now put her down. <laughs>